in this journey mapped out by Lord God Jesus, we're in a place on the map called Word Gate Part 2. So blessed are those who have ears to hear. We're going to be in the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, and then we're going to hop down to verses 13 through 16, and then further on down, verses 25 through 41. Verse 1. As he, Jesus, went along, he saw, and this is from the mental to the spiritual, a man blind, physical or mental, from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, or master teacher, who sinned? And this word sin is to not share or have a part of, forfeit by missing the mark. Who sinned, this man or his parents, in order that he was born blind? Three, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works, the deed, the employment, the task of God might be displayed in him. And this word displayed actually is from the word light, the word light source. And the word means to make manifest, to become manifest, so that the works of God might be this light source, might become manifest in him. For as long as it is day, remember the kingdom of day, we must, or it is necessary to do or to work, meaning to search, to do, to examine, or accomplish the works, that task or that employment of him who sent me. Night is coming. Remember the kingdom of night. When no one can or is able to work, they're not able to search, to do, examine, or accomplish these things of God. Five, while I am in the world, I am the light, the light source, Jesus is saying, of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made. This is to do, make, or construct some mud with saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. And this word put means to spread on or to anoint. So remember that. On the man's eyes. And this word eye is the eye or the mind's eye. Verse 7. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. Remember Jesus said, as my father sent me, I send you. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. This is to see physically with spiritual results. So now we're going to hop down to verse 13. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes, remember it's eye or the mind's eye, was a Sabbath. And Sabbath is the seventh day, is to cease to rest. 15. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received or recovered his sight. He put or he laid upon or he placed upon mud on my eyes, the man replied. And I washed and now I see. And again, that's physical into the spiritual. 16. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from or close beside God, for he does not keep, which means to watch over, guard or observe or preserve the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform, or do, or make, or construct such signs. So they were divided. Verse 25, he replied, the man who was blind, this is, whether he is a sinner, which this word sinner is lost from falling short of what God approves. So whether he is a sinner, I don't know. And this word know is seeing physically, or it's to the mental and to the spiritual. So seeing something physically, and then mentally and spiritually. So he doesn't know. One thing I do know that he sees physically, mentally, and spiritually, that I was blind, but now I see. He sees physically into the spiritual. 26. Then they, the Pharisees, asked him, what did he do? Make, do, or construct, this means, to you. How did he open your eyes? And again, that's physical eye as well as the mind's eye. He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen or hear. Why do you want, wish, or desire to hear it again? Do you want or desire to become his disciple too? And remember that word become is to come into being, born, became, or to emerge, transitioning from one point, realm, or condition to another. So do you want to become, transition his disciple too? 
28. Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this, meaning Jesus, fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know, and again that word notice from the physical to the mental, the spiritual, that God spoke to Moses. That as for this, meaning Jesus, this fellow, we don't even know from where or what place he comes from. 30. The man answered, Within this, meaning within Jesus, for an amazing thing it is that you don't know from where or what place he exists. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear from sinners. And again, that sinners is a loss from falling short of. He hears the godly person, the God-fearing one, who does to do to make or construct his will. 32. Out of this age, nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes, again, physical as well as mental eyes, of a man born. And this word born is to be born, to be gotten, offspring, to be born blind. And again, remember that word blind is a physical or mental blind. 33. If this, meaning Jesus, this man were not from or close beside God, he could do, make, do, or construct not one, no one, or nothing. 34. To him they replied, You are steeped in sin, meaning no share, no part of. Well, no share of what? Kingdom. You were steeped in sin at birth. In other words, when as an offspring, when you were begotten. And you teach us, and they threw, they cast him outside. 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said, You believe into the Son of Man? Who is he, Lord? The man asked, so that I may believe into him. Jesus said, Indeed, you have seen. Remember, that's a mental into the spiritual seeing. So, indeed, you have seen him. Indeed, he, and this word he, means that one there. And it comes from the word there, yonder, or in that place. He is the one speaking with you. And this word with means after with, change afterward, looks towards after the effect. So it's a change or result once somebody's been with you. So he, meaning Jesus, in that place, is the one speaking with that after change with you. 38. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment, verdict, I have come into this world, so that those not seeing, in other words, to see the physical into the spiritual, will see. They will see physically into the spiritual. And those who see will become, remember that transitioning from one realm to the other, blind. They will be blind physically or mentally. 40. Some Pharisees who were with And again, that word, the after change with him, Jesus, heard him say this and said, Not also we are blind. 41. Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not hold or possess sin, meaning that no share, no part of the forfeiture because of missing the mark. You wouldn't hold that. But now that you claim, you lay it to rest that you see physically and mentally your sin that forfeiture of the kingdom remains. So now that you've had ears to hear, to hear his word, to hear his voice, do you have eyes to see? To see what? To see where he's leading you. So now we are going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 20. Verse 14. This is Jesus speaking. He's speaking to the crowds and his disciples. You are the light. And that's that same word, light, when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now he's saying, you are the light of the world, that light source. Remember in Jesus' life, and in that life is the light of all mankind. We get our light from him. He's the true light. And we have that within us for those who have believed into him. So Jesus is saying, you are the light that light source of the world, not is able a city to be hidden on. 
or above or more than a hill or a mountain line. So not as able a city to be hidden on, a hill or a mountain that it is set. We're going to look at this. Not as able a city. Well, what city? The holy Jerusalem. Hidden. Well, what's to be hidden? The light source. It's not to be hidden. On what mountain are we referring to? Mount Zion. Because this is where he ultimately is leading his people. It is a heavenly city. Jesus is building his city, his kingdom now. So as he is the light of the world, you, the body, we are the light of the world. Starts with the head. Christ is the head. The church is the body. So you are the light of the world. 15. Neither light a lamp and put it under a container or a basket. Instead, put it on the lampstand and it shines to everyone in the house. And remember, we are a part of God's house. We're to shine that, but not just to here, to the whole world. 16. In the same way, let your light, that light source, shine before others in the world so that they may see. Remember that word see is with the mind and to spiritually. Your good deeds, and this word deeds is a, a work, a task, or an employment, that they may see your good deeds, your work, your task, your employment, and glorify. And this word glorify means to ascribe weight, to recognize the real substance and give it value. Remember Jesus told the Pharisees, you do not value me. So Jesus is saying here that when you shine your light and that others may see your good works and they would glorify, they would see the value of your Father in the heavens. So let me just reread that. 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds, your works, and glorify, give value to your Father in the heavens. 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law. Remember, the law is the scripture. Jesus is the law. Or the prophets. Remember Jesus in all parts of his totality. He's our teacher, our master, our rabbi. He's a prophet. He's the high priest. He'll be the king of kings and lord of lords when he comes. So he's saying, do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them. Meaning, I've not come to abolish myself, for I am the word of God but to fulfill them, to complete them. For truly, I tell you, I lay this argument to rest or closure. Until the heavens and earth pass away, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a letter, will by any means pass away from the law. Until everything, and this word everything is all parts of a totality, is accomplished. And this word is accomplished is actually become. So let me reread that. For truly I tell you, I lay it to rest to closure until the heavens and the earth pass away. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a letter will by any means pass away from the law. Remember Jesus' law. Until all parts of his totality has become. This is waiting. These are things that are waiting still to be fulfilled. 19. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands, and this word commands or commandments means in the end, an end result or the objective. So a commandment of God, he gives you a commandment for the objective, the end result of it. So therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments, or these, this objective, this end result, and teaches others accordingly, will be called least in the kingdom of the heavens. But whoever practices, or does, or makes, or constructs, and teaches these commands or commandments, will be called great 
in the kingdom of the heavens. 20. For I tell you, I lay it to rest, this argument, bring it to closure, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the scribes, you will certainly not enter into the kingdom of the heavens. Okay, so wait a minute. He's saying your righteousness has to surpass the Pharisees. Remember the Pharisees, they upheld all the laws. Jesus said, listen to what they say, because they spoke of the commandments, of course, of God. He said, don't do what they do, because these people were divided. A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. You and yourself, you have a kingdom, and you choose who your master is, whether the default of the father of lies of this world or of the Lord our God. Praise Jesus. So, your righteousness needs to surpass them. The law does not go anywhere. Jesus is the law. He's the Ark of the Covenant. He fulfills it all. So, what you have to remember here is Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus answered, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And unto this is to love your neighbor as yourself. And in this, the law, everything is fulfilled. So when you look at that, if you love God, if you love Jesus with everything, all your heart, your mind, your strength, your soul, you are going to do what he's called you to do. He says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So if you love him, that first commandment, you're going to do that. So the fulfillment of the law is to love one another as Jesus loves us. And if I'm following him, I'm going to do as he's commanding me to do. Jesus says, just as the Father had sent him, he sends us. And we must work while it's still day. So there's a seeking here. As I seek him, I'm going to find myself. And as I seek him, I'm also going to seek this task, this employment that he's got. He has for all those who are willing to come, come into this covenant with him. Remember, a covenant is a two-way agreement. So I can give a little illustration of a covenant. So as a husband and wife come into covenant with each other and get married, if the wife decides that she's just going to sit on the couch all day and she is not going to take care of her husband, love her husband, take care of the children, cook, clean, work, or do anything in terms of part of the relationship, yet she confesses and says, yes, we're married. I even have the paper to prove it. Eventually, the husband will be long-suffering enough and come to her and call her out on it, try to correct her. But eventually, he can tell her to get out. I'm going to be, be very blunt. She's not keeping her end of the covenant. It's a two-way agreement. So as Christ has died for us, shed his blood, forgiven us, cleansed us, he's called you out. He's called you to serve him. You will serve the Lord your God, he says on this mountain. And remember, there's a a holy Jerusalem that comes down. Now I know that's at the very end, so to speak. But we have much to work before that end comes. You don't want to miss it. And one more thing. When we think about this righteousness, righteousness is referred to the righteous acts of you. Your acts will be judged. So Jesus said, the scripture, the words, testified to who he was. So therefore, we too, we confess out of our mouths, we believe our words testify to who we are. But Jesus didn't end there. He also said, my works, the works of the Father through him, testify to who he is. Likewise, if he's called you out, and as the Father has sent him, and he sends you, you have a task and employment, a work that's going to testify for you. And if you think not, I question, do you think you're greater than your master? For we are not. Then if his words and his works, those testify to who he was, they too, likewise, testify to who we are. So, to those who have had ears, to hear and eyes to see. May you know him, serve him, and follow him to where 
he is going. You might ask, well, where? That is why we're taking this journey. So we are going to stop there. The next time, we are going to be in Word Gate Part 3.